All right. Um, let's see if the rest of these guys remember us. All right, let's do this. So the third and last coordinate system that we're gonna need in our toolbox is the spherical coordinate system. So, In a similar way to the Cartesian and the cylindrical, we <clears throat> we're gonna define a point in this system. We're gonna define surfaces. That means we're going to define location, surfaces, and volume. So here, digest this. 
The surface ridge are used to define the spherical coordinate system on the three um, uh, Cartesian axis R, sphere of radius R, origin as the center of the sphere, a right circular cone with its apex at the origin and its axis as Z axis, its half angle is theta. It denotes, it rotates about Z axis and theta varies from zero to 180. So that's a half cone. A half plane perpendicular to the XY plane containing Z axis, making an angle phi with the XZ plane. Okay. Thus the three coordinates of the point P in the spherical coordinate system are R, theta, and phi. What all of that means? This is your sphere, right? So your R, your R starts at the origin and go out. Right? So this is your R, zero to whatever you want it to be. Your theta. So your theta now goes like this. And your phi goes like this, around. All right. So you see, right here we um, superimpose the the um, the sphere on. the Cartesian system. And that's commonly done because normally we are more comfortable in the Cartesian system. So here you are, zero to R. The theta goes around like this. And your phi goes around like this. So I go from zero to infinity. Your phi goes around the, the thing. Goes around. So it's zero to two pi. And your theta goes from zero to pi. So then, let us first look at a point P. This is P. So we want to find P, All right? The point P, of course, it will have coordinates R, theta, and phi. 
the angle theta and phi are measured in radians. The point P can be defined as the intersection of the three surfaces in spherical coordinate system, like in any one of the other systems. So R is a constant, which is a sphere with centered origin. Theta is the constant, which is right circular cone with apex as origin of and axis Z. So this is your axis Z and your theta. All right. So then this is your to get to P, this is your angle theta. Phi is constant. Is a plane perpendicular to the xy plane. This is your xy plane. Right. So your phi move from x, like in the cylindrical, going into y. So here is a better picture. This is your cone. So here now, I believe, say, say if your P was here, right? Oh, the question, sir. Yeah. So in regards to that, the charges and so the ones that um that they say radiate is that related to the radius like this the spherical um, coordinate system. Spher we haven't done anything with charges yet. We this is just the tools that we need to understand when we get into charge, which will be shortly. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay. So. This is basically the mathematics that you didn't get. Oh, yes, sir. It's, it's interesting, sir. Mm. So then, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? So here, we are. Okay. Let's go on a little further. There is a better illustration coming up. So, okay. This is your point P. All right. So to get to your point P, you will have to travel R. All right. Then you'll have to go over theta. And then you have to go around 
Five. Sir, could you just go over those points that look um, blotted out? Never. Which one? Um, like the, the cone, I'm not, I'm not sure how, it come, how the cone completes. Um, this is the cone, eh? So, so that's the echo. Mm -hmm. No. So then, you're at the origin here, right? Eh? So we are saying that, that to get here, point P, Get to point P. Uh oh, oh, what is the hell happened there? To get to point P, first thing, right? you have to travel outwards from the origin. All right. So, so you start, at, you use X, use the X then. So you come out from the origin R. Consider it this way. You are going to put a half of the orange on the death. So you put down the half of the orange. All right? You put down the half of the orange. This is your origin right here. Of course, this would be, I don't know, I can't draw, I don't know what drawing. You guys have to do technical drawing. Oh, well, that is five, so. Hmm? That, that is, that would be five, the five axis. I... No, no, hold on. I ask a question and say if you guys have to do technical driving, of course. Oh, oh. oh I did sir. it before, sir. Hmm? No, sir. I did it before, though. Mm. I want to do an AutoCAD, sir. AutoCAD, I run the thing now. But when I was doing this crap, we didn't have AutoCAD. We have to go up on the, the drawing board with the T square and all of that. And, and regardless of which one of the engineers you're doing with a mechanical, uh, those times we only have mechanical and electrical. But all of us had to do technical drive. Poor me come from a grammar, grammar school, never know nothing about it. But, 
No bluff, man, we ain't copy, man, we ain't it. Anyway. Hey, man, sir, best way I forgot you. <laughs> best way, that's true. <laughs> Uh, I do up there, make the one I think you can't copy me. I go do this. No, I make this, sir. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, let's put let, let's see if we superimpose the Cartesian on this. So, we're gonna say this now. Should I use a different color? Is the X is the Z, and this. Change the color. I use that green one there with This is your Y. So this is your Y. This is your Z. And your X would come like this. All right, so this, this point here, so this point here is right there. Okay. So we want to get to P, this is P. So we're gonna come along X or R. This is X. Okay. And we are going to go around now. Mm. So R is constant. Okay. We're gonna want to know R is constant. So this is also R. Mm -hmm. So we don't have no Z, that's R. We want to know come around Theta. So we come R. We go up this angle phi. And then we come around theater to get to there. Now, remember when we find a distance, just think with me now, uh, help me think. We're going to now use up the, the arc. So
just like how we use up the arc and the cylindrical to find what the actual distance is in radians. We're gonna, okay, before we do that, let's go through this editorial. Similar to the other two coordinate system, there are three unit vectors in the uh, theater and five direction denoted as AR, A theater, and A phi. So in the Cartesian, it was AX, AY, and AZ. In the cylindrical, it was AR, A, A phi, and AZ. In this cylinder, in this spherical, is AR, A theta, and A phi. These unit vectors are mutually perpendicular to each other and are shown in this figure. Now, So all of the, these three, they are mutually per perpendicular. Let's, let's look at one now. Here is P, right? So P come out R. So if you make a, if you make a circle with, in this direction, around, right? That's in the eighth in the in the eighth theater. It is always perpendicular to R, because R come out and meet you there. So anywhere you go along this circle your R will be, remember your R is constant. So your R will always be perpendicular to theta. And similarly for phi, your R will always be perpendicular to phi. And if you do the same thing with theta, theta will always be perpendicular to phi and so on and so forth. So they are mutually orthogonal. So to get to P, our vector P from the original is PR, that is P in the R direction, AR, P in the theta, A theta, and P in the phi, A phi. That's your vector. We are A R, A theta, and A phi are your unit vectors. Okay. What else can I say about these three coordinate systems? <clears throat> we are going to <clears throat> it it's helpful. Like I said, up to this point, everything is just math. Vector algebra, it's known as. 
which you should have. What do you have? Mat, what they call it? Math tree. They don't teach anything. In, oh God. Right. It was in math, some some math in math too. So we did some volume of revolution, but I'm not sure if what that really relates to. Um, yeah, um, what I'm talking about is actual vector. You, you, you haven't done any work with vector in any of your math. Did it in physics, physics, engineering physics. Okay. Let me let me see if I can find something. Okay. I wasn't planning. I wasn't planning on doing an example today. But let us Let us in. <coughs> Let us in invest a little bit more time in this vector thing before we move on. Uh, Can you read this? Yes, sir. I'll see. Give me. The point P is 410 meter and Q is one three zero meter. Fill in the table and make a sketch of the vectors found in A through F. Okay. 
First, so you want to find the vector A from the origin P. So vector A from origin to P. So from origin to P, you go what? Four in the X, one, two, three, four. One in the Y, one this way. So that's your point P. So vector A from, o to, from origin to P is this, 4AY, 1AX. So what's the unit vector? Now, the unit vector is x square plus one square, the square root of that over the modulus, right? So, now the unit vector would be vector A, over the modulus of vector A. So this is your vector A, right? So what's the modulus of this? Four square, Four four sixteen plus one square, which is one, the square root of the square root of that. So what's the square root of seventeen? So four point one two three. Four point one two. So the unit vector. of A, the unit vector of A of vector A would be equal to this over, which is vector A, over four point whatever, four point one something. Okay. So the square root So four, four over four point one something give you what? So point nine seven plus oh. point two four three. So that's it. So this now a over the modulus of a is the unit vector. In the same way you can find B. B is exactly like A. Now you want to find your vector from P to Q. Right? Vector from P to Q. 
So that is Q, P to Q, the vector from P to Q is Q minus P. Right? So it's one minus four plus three minus one. Okay. One minus four plus three minus one. AX, AY, and zero minus zero. So you get this. And this now is your modulus. So your unit vector from P to Q would be this over this. Right? Which gives you this. You get it? So when you when you when we get give you a charge now, or when we have a charge, because we're doing this together. When we have a charge, define as this. Huh? So if I have a charge, Mm, if I ask this, the AX for that charge, of course, are the unit vector, because you have to have a value for this. You know how to calculate the unit vector. Similarly, you can do A plus B, C minus A, B minus A. And we can find the unit vector that was similar. <coughs> All right. Which one is this now? When I reach this edge, we don't reach there. I was hoping we have an example of the other coordinate systems. But we might have to get back to that. The electromagnetics is easy, man. It's just the math. You understand? Math is the problem. Okay, here's a spherical coordinate system. <laughs> I think of this one though. 
Heinrich vor allem vom Kardinal das Völker. Okay. Um. In your, in any, these are usually in the, in the appendix of an electromagnetic text. The way the, um, the formula to go from Cartesian to cylindrical, from Cartesian to spherical and vice versa and all of that. So this is not really. All right, here, here is one now. Here is one. This might be helpful. So given a volume defined by R goes from one meter to three meter. Theta go from zero to zero. That no make no sense. How do you go from zero to zero? Uh, I was wondering if is the one for five is negative ninety or so. But I'm not sure either. No, I don't. Okay. Mm, fine okay. You remember the first one we did was the Cartesian, right? And we have to go back to it to, to explain something which is relevant to all of them. You remember where we did the surfaces, right? So you go. the six surfaces. And we said that this face here is, is Y times Z, Y times Z, that's this.
we we drop short in that we didn't specify the volume. Right? The volume is x times y times z. Right. So, why is that important? If we say we have a volume charge, okay, before I say that, X times Y times Z, right? That's the volume of your cube. Right? So the volume volume is something X and something Y. And something Z. Now, when we get to electromagnetics, and we are going to say, we have a volume charge going from zero to so the x times y times z is really the integral from zero to x, zero to y. Zero to Z. So if we get a charge in all of these variables, right, and we get the limit of your x, your y, and your z to find the volume of the charge, which we, in simple math, you would just multiply, but it's really a triple integral. You with me? So it would be zero to x dx zero to y dy. If we have a charge, a cylinder of charge would be r square sine theta dr sine theta dr, d theta, d phi. And we already established that theta goes from zero to, to 90. We are going to pandemic done on, we would have did anyway. I was going to say a few big deli people are left.
All right, we're back. Let's see if everybody back. Come yeah, on, sir. We're there, sir. We're there, man. All right, no. No. Why is this important to us in our real life? You, you guys, you guys never watch. Um, Star Trek. I don't know what I'm moving there. Are they? Yes, sir. And you remember yes, when sir. They... Hear about it, sir. So you never know. You know, you know watch a series where you have Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and all them people there. And um, they're on a voyage. And sometimes them encounter certain for steel science fiction man let's go watch them thing the man but anyway that is to say okay the people now come here again they used to make comb especially when back in our days we used to have afro so the, the comb them used to make out of some um, uh, plastic kind of something. And when you comb your hair, it kind of have a static charge, build up a static charge on the comb. You could have used it, pick up a piece of paper, you know, and a charge. 
But say I don't have foolishness to say this. If you have a charge, right? And you bring a different charge close to it, it's like magnet. This one have a effect on that one. Charge Q1 have an effect on charge Q2. And charge Q2 have an effect on charge Q1. And you can multiply this to any amount of charge. They have an effect on one another. And at some arbitrary point in space, the total charge there, the effective charge there, would be the resultant of the effect of all of the charges. Make sense? Make sense? Guess not. Anybody out there? What I said just now made any sense at all? If this was a magnet, and this was a magnet, say a bar magnet with north and south, north and south. The not poles would repair, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. But the not pole would affect that would attract the south pole. Yes, sir. So I'm saying just like the magnet. Right? You have charge they're going to affect each other in, in a certain mm -hmm. vicinity. Right? In addition, I'm saying if you have one charge here and one charge here, at some arbitrary point here, you're going to have an effect, which will be the effect of this and this plus the effect of this on this. So the effect of those two charges in the vicinity would be the sum of the effect of the two charges. Yes? We are, we are doing this in us. Nobody drop a seat, probably. Nobody would it. Zero day, I'm on. Zero day, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. All right, so we're going to start with the first of the electrostatic laws. Coulomb law states that Coulomb's law Okay, let's have that. Coulomb's law, you have to speak proper English now. Coulomb's law states that force between two point charges, Q1 and Q2. All right, stick a pin there. There was, there is a reason why we spoke about a point at a certain location. There, was, there is a reason why we spoke about surfaces. And there is a reason why we spoke about volume. Because 
we are going to first consider a point charge, a minuscule point charge at some location. Then we are going to talk about a sheet of charge in a certain coordinate system, any one of the three. And then we are going to talk about a volume of charge in any one of the coordinate system. So, the first thing you will have to do to do whatever like electromagnetics involved in the question is to calculate the actual amount of charge. Right? Back to Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law states the force, the force, star trick, between two point charges, Q1 and Q2, Q1 and Q2, acts along the line joining the two charges, is directly proportional to the product of the two charges and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Can you put that in an equation? Sir, would it be Q1 Sir, Q1 over R square? So it's Q1, force F is directly, let, let me, all right, it's been too long for that, let's, let's, let's go to it. So force is directly proportional to the product and it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Right. Capit. Yes, sir. Capiche. Yes, sir. How do you get rid of this proportionality sign? So you get a constant. Mm. Something like that, right? Yes, sir. So that's the force between two point charge. According to Coulombs. Now, he didn't stop there. I'm doing experiment. Yeah. So you didn't stop there. All right? He did his experiment and work out some value for this K for us. The K is one over four pi epsilon, where epsilon is the permit permittivity of the medium. That's what you didn't name epsilon. Yeah, this epsilon. Oh, he's hearing me? Yeah, 
You know what I'm going to hear you. No, it's not. Eh? what? No. The permittivity of free space is epsilon naught. So whatever the medium, we just multiply the permittivity of free space by that, by that um, uh, ratio, the ratio we call ER. So epsilon R. So epsilon is epsilon naught times the relative permittivity. So F, the force between two charges in air or in a vacuum is one upon four pi epsilon naught Q1, Q2 over R squared. Epsilon naught is one upon 36 pi times 10 to the minus nine, or 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 farad per meter. So K for free space is nine times 10 to the nine uh, meter per farad, meter over farad. Right? Simple enough, right? Yes, sir. Some calculations on it. All right. So, this is the reason now. Or the vector calculus. Consider two point charges, Q1 and Q2, located at points having position R1 and R2 as shown in figure 2-2. Two, two. So here is R1, Q1, and Q2. This is your location vector for Q1 and your location vector for Q2. So what we want to do, the force exerted on Q1, by Q1 on Q2, acts along the direction R12, just like the, the definition said, it acts along this line, straight line between the two of them, right? So the force between them is a vector. A vector have direction, that's all. R12. The distance between them is R12. And the direction is one to two. Yeah? So F, F and two, U to one, is Q1 over Q2, four pi, F sum naught, the vector, the, the magnitude of the vector square, in the direction. So you have to multiply it now by the unit vector. So the first thing you have to do now is what? Find your unit vector. So the, ve the vector R1 to 2 
is the position vector of R2 minus R1 over this. No, is, is the position vector R2 minus R1. And the unit vector, you divide by the modulus. Again, anybody tell us electromagnetics hard, then go about them business. It's foolishness. Cool as are not hard. But you have to can add a minus vector and find unit vector. Because force is a vector. See if you follow that. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Oh, thanks. This is a matter of I can actually make the notes properly when we actually get the document. You know eh? As in, some of us would have, would have more understand better when we don't make the notes and it. So I need to document it. So. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I'll get it. Yeah, you tell us they are the same with the weekend, right? So, yeah, it's also good. You know, and yeah, yeah, I'll get the document. But, uh, me like, me like, um, you know what I find to be a problem? A lot of people, when, when them get the, the document, right? They don't, um, they don't come class. Oh, sir, I see you, please, sir. I see you, please. No, 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 no. So, I like, I like, um, I got to ask you. I like, finish with the document before I send it. That's why I normally hesitate to send it, but maybe send it still. Because, because when you read, when you read it, it make it, it easy reading. And you say, oh, I saw this stuff, I saw this stuff. But when you actually start doing. You now have the like, explanation explanation everything. Right. But may I listen it? Uh, this, uh... So there you go now. So you can calculate the force on one charge due to the next and so on and so forth and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So now, Before we go to electric field intensity, let me come back up here though. So, to calculate the force and charge two due to charge one or vice versa. The only possible 
struggle, which I know no one struggle, is to calculate the unit vector and calculate the actual vector and calculate the unit vector. Right. Let me point out something. When we just write out the general equation, we say it was Q1, Q2 over four pi epsilon naught R square, right? Now, A12 is this. So, I should have asked you this now. Which one I ask you now? When we want to ask you, and 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 this this back up my point, when, you know, when I say, well, that's one of the reasons why I'm mean, not like send the thing I'm mean, I use. Look at an equation like this. You read in two. You yeah, gotta say, cho. It's a one, two. Me not have to go a class. All right? Yes, sir, tell me this. <clears throat> Look at what is in the denominator here. This, this, is actually R one two the, the square this is actually R two one the square root of R two one Right. So now, oh, sir, is that the correction? Hmm? Is that the correction you're saying? No, man, it's not a correction. It's actually what it is. What's the model loss? R one square plus R two square the square root. That's all. Does that again, sir? If you have a vector, hey, a, yes, sir. R squared. Mm -hmm. But it's square root. It's square root. No. When you start with the actual problem, you're going to see this right as 4 pi epsilon naught r 2 1 to the 3 half. And, and this disappear. Which is, it, all I'm saying is, it's entirely math. But um, if someone not point it out to you in the lectures, you might read it and understand it to a point. But when you go to apply it, it's a different story. All right. 
I'm going, we're going to pick up from here. But let me go back to my problem sheet and see if we can find an example to illustrate that. I don't think so. Um, everyone consider giving us some problem sheet. Like, mm -hmm. we'll work with some of the question them for like tutorial time or, or something like that. No, man, they want to see me collect, collect from different books. This is uh, the sheet that I have, and I'll have all the exam questions and plan it and all and so on. Can't get that. Uh, you're wicked in the youth. It's a, it's a one, no, sir. You think yeah. so? It's like a tutorial paper, you know? No, we have tutorial paper. You whole lot, brother. Who whole down. <laughs> All right, sir. <laughs> we have tutorial paper. We'll see if we play a lot, probably. Yeah. I'm going to put it this way. When I'm going to electric field intensity because that's a new concept. It's easy. Mm. All right. This is the story. something there. Like it off. Mm. All right, this is what I wanted to, to do over the next week for me. And this is very, very important now. Um, I didn't send you the syllabus, did I? So, One of you guys have to show me one of these days how for thief textbook, you know. 
I'm going to download the textbook. Then. Yeah, I got that right here, so sir. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, yeah, what are you on the show? Yes, sir. But all right, um, you're going to get a book called Elements of Electromagnetics by Sadiko. Have that? By, by who, sir? Sadiko. S A D I K U, I think. Hold on, I have my copy here. Let me look for it. Yeah. How much page is that, sir? S, S A D I K U. Matthew Sadiko. Oh, sorry. How much page you have? What's the one down fifty? But they have. It have um, about two or three chapter dedicated to vector algebra and vector calculus. So I would like you to go through those chapters. And it have a lot of work examples. and try and work some on your own. It will um, make our life a lot easier going forward. It, it cover basically the stuff that we have gone through so far, but I, I tell you the truth, in, in, in a few hours of lecture, there is absolutely no way we could do it, uh, or I could do it justice. You have to put in some work yourself. So go to the chapters on vector algebra and vector calculus and do some examples, and that will put us in good shape to have a pleasant relationship. Reasonary? Yes, sir. All right. So next week now, to set up for next week, we're going to start with electric field intensity. And we're going to do electric flux, electric flux density, and so on and so forth. We're going to migrate from the simple point charge and, and then we we do line charge, sheet charge, and volume charge. And the greater part of the, the lecture, because as you see, the um the electromagnetics is pretty simple. We're gonna spend on some doing some problems. So I'll, in class, I'll say, all right, here's a problem. Do this problem in 15 minutes. I'll give you the 15 minutes, and then we do solve the problem together. But in order for you to get what you need to get out of the session, just do what I ask you to do. Invest that little time. All right? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, is there a course outline? Yeah, man. I'll, I'll, I'll let you get that as well.
Are you a call me son, you know? If you don't get your thing. All right, so next week. All right, sir. Yes, sir. All right, sir.